This is a once in a lifetime offer of my recently published books in all formats. Please take advantage of these discounts by adding these books to your personal library and be sure to share some of them with your friends and family. Thanks. Hello, this is Blake Higginbottom with Home Family Gathering. You are cordially invited to join with us on our Saturday call. If you'll contact me from the website below and send me your contact information, I'll be more than happy to add you to the notification list. Again, this is Blake Higginbotham, and we are looking forward to connecting, communicating, corroborating, and collaborating with you. Have a blessed day. I'm so thankful to have a special guest speaker that I've uh, recently reconnected with, and we've been kind of communicating back and forth through Facebook Messenger and on Facebook through our post and such, and uh, just a um, valuable asset to the kingdom of God. Um, and this is the way we receive people on this call. Uh, Blessed is she who comes in the name of Yahshua. We receive you, woman of Yahweh. Sister Cindy Coates. The floor is yours. <laughs> well, I'm very honored. Thank you very much for your hospitality today, everyone, and taking the time to connect with one another. Um, you know, the word says, forsake not the assembly, the assembly. Um, and there's a difference between a gathering and an assembly. And, mm -hmm. a, and a, one of the um, examples of that is, uh, I'll give you, is that... Um, my mother was notorious about giving our sons bikes for Christmas, except the, for one thing, Christmas Eve, she would bring over a box that had all the bike parts in it that my husband had to put together Christmas Eve in order for that bike to be functional on Christmas morning. Because no child wants to have a box with a bunch of bike parts in it. They want to have a, a bike to ride. And so um, that bike had to be assembled. It wasn't about gathering the parts together. It was about assembling them together. And so big difference between assemblies and gatherings. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with the gathering. Don't get me wrong. Uh, there's a lot of times we'll just gather with people just to fellowship and enjoy one another. But then there are times where you assemble and that's with intention and purpose to build something and to make something functional and uh, something that will move forward. And so um, whenever I'm invited to speak, I know that it's an assembly because that's what God's called me to is assemblies. He's a call. He's called me to assemble and to build um, my mother's family and my daddy's family were both in the building industries in Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia and uh, seventh generation Atlantan. And uh, there are streets named after my family here. We've been here so long, um, but yet they're both uh, builders on both sides of my family. So I got it honest as a builder. And so. Um, that's what I'm here to do today is to build up the body of Christ and to uh, share something, hopefully something that you will be able to take with you for the rest of the day and the week and hopefully throughout the summer and do something with it. Um, I just want to say uh, a few things that have just been in my heart. And um, this may sound very um, pieced together. Uh, I don't really have a teaching per se in front of me, but I'm just going to share nuggets, I guess you would say, just nuggets, just drop some nuggets on you. A few things are um, what the Lord's been showing me about the kingdom of God, seeking first the kingdom of God. Uh, so if we seek first the kingdom of God, um, there's a lot of blessing in that. And so we have to define what that is. And um you guys know that Jesus was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. There's an order of Melchizedek. And that order was actually um, in the name of Melchizedek, which means 
um, king of righteousness, king of peace. So Jesus was both uh, righteousness and peace embodied in one person. But yet he said it was for the joy set before him that he endured the cross. So there was no joy until after the cross. There was only righteousness and peace. But through the cross, he obtained joy. And so the kingdom of God was possessed, you know, on the other side of the cross because there was only righteousness and peace, the order of Melchizedek until the cross. Then he got the joy added to it. And so one thing that we have to do right in this time, because people ask me when I'm talking to leaders, they go, what's God saying to leaders? God is saying to leaders that we're not going to do very much without joy. We're not going to do very much without receiving joy and being ministers of joy and having joy. I, I It amazes me how many times I will listen to a Christian talk and they won't even smile. I mean, they won't even crack a smile. They're so somber and so like burdened or weighed down like they won't even smile and i'm going where's the joy of your salvation because if we can't be ministers of joy and you can't minister what you don't possess if you don't have it you sure can't give it and so sometimes you just have to sit and say god yeah i'm seeking first the kingdom of god i know i'm righteous because of what jesus did I know I have peace because of what Jesus did. And I receive joy because of what Jesus did too. And, it's, and joy is our strength. And I'm telling you guys, we are going to have to have a lot of strength to get through what we're going through right now. And when I say through, I mean going on the other side of it. And you've got to see the end from the beginning. We've got to see what's on, what's on the other side of this thing. Because you can't go through something unless you see what's on the other side of it. Okay, you've got to have that as your victory point. And that is your end game, so to speak. And it's always victory, 100% victory, as you guys know. We know that we know how this whole thing works. You know, we have the victory already. We don't have to wait till something happens. You know, and then there's a thing they say, pray, you know. We have to, or pray, pray, pray until something happens, you know, or praise until something happens. No, we don't. We, we already, we walk in it already. We walk in the victory already. And once we know that, and once we embrace that, it's really easy, you know. And um, I have a feeling that a lot of you uh, who are gathered here today are in ministry. Um, you You consider yourself in ministry, even though uh, you might not be a pastor of a church or be the head of a ministry, uh, at a formal ministry per se, but you are in the ministry, like on your job and with your family, you know that you are in the ministry in your neighborhood and, um, you have to be intentional every day as a minister. You have to be intentional about it and you have to know that, um, not everything that's ministry is kingdom. Not everything that's ministry is kingdom. I see a lot of people doing ministry, but they're not operating in the righteousness. They're not operating in the in the peace of God. Definitely not the peace of God. And they're not operating in joy. They're not having fun. And you can tell. And nobody wants to be around that. I know I don't. I don't want to be around people that are, you know, just as, bummed out and 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 just as vexed as everybody else in the world i mean what have we got to offer we we've got the best to offer and so um i, I just want you you know i just want everybody here here it is saturday and tomorrow a lot of people are going to go to a to a meeting a gathering or hopefully an assembly you know not all gatherings are assemblies like i said but even if you go to a gathering and fellowship with the believers Go in there carrying the kingdom of God, the righteousness of God, not condemnation, you know, not shame. 
not uh, you know chaos and and uh, all that. We come in there with peace and order. You know, we come together with peace. We come together with order. We come together with joy, which is strength. Amen. So it's so important that we see it that way. And um, and today, I mean, what I feel like I'm doing right now is just I'm exhorting you. Hopefully, um, you know, just giving you a, um, you know, encouragement. Because that, that's what I feel like I do when I don't have a, a teaching. Because when I teach, I have a PowerPoint. It's a course, you know. I mean, it's line upon line, precept upon precept. And then I pause, ask questions, and then I go for forward. So it's not really a teaching today. It's more of an encouragement, just words of encouragement, kind of coaching you up, so to speak. I feel like I'm coaching you up. You know, and another thing we have to realize is we've got to uh, not, we can't look in the rear view mirror, okay? Let me tell you what, I have a podcast. I want everybody on here to go subscribe right now or as ASAP to my podcast. It's called Present Truth matters present truth matters i mean all you got to do is go to present present truth matters.com that's my website and then you can just click on uh spotify or itunes whichever i'm on iHeartRadio. radio i'm on google play i'm on amazon audible i'm on all the major podcast platforms right now and i'll tell you how that happened uh, you know most of us on here look like we're about the same age, okay? <laughs> and uh, we all grew up on cassette tapes, listening to cassette tapes and CDs, right? That's how yeah. we we cut our teeth on teaching. But when those became obsolete, I got real, real discouraged. Like, how am I going to get my teaching out there? How am I going to get the message God's given me out to the masses? And there, there were for years, I felt like I had just gone down in flames. Like there is nowhere for this to go. And I said, God, stop talking to me. Stop telling me things you want me to share with people because I don't have any way of sharing things with people anymore. Okay. Nobody wants cassette tapes. Nobody wants um, CDs and things like that. And I said, I don't even know how to get this message out. And then I started learning about podcasts. And how podcasts are actually free. They're free to download. And you can binge on podcasts and hear them over and over again. It's like we used to do cassette tapes. Well, then I had some friends who had podcasts. And I went and listened to them. And I didn't like the way they sound. Because I'm I'm married to a really, really, really good musician. <laughs> And we don't like things that do not sound good. So uh, I didn't want that. And I wanted something that was going to be top notch. I thought if I'm going to do this, I want to do this right. And I just dropped it. I just said, forget it, you know. Then during COVID, speaking of COVID, uh, Blake, um, I cannot tell you how many of these Zoom calls I was on. Yep. And how many podcast interviews I was asked. I mean, I had probably at least three or four a week that I was on all over the world. Just, you know, I saw everybody was doing at the time. And so I forgot about them. I mean, I, I would do one and then move on to the next one. I really did forget. And so like a year later, I get a phone call from Charisma Podcast Network, which you guys know Charisma Magazine, where they have a podcast network. Yes. And they reached out to me and asked me would I be on there. And I said, well, I don't even teach what y'all teach. I mean, I, I let them know. I, I think you got the wrong number because I, I don't really teach what y'all teach. In fact, there's a lot of stuff y'all teach. I teach against it because it's not in the Bible. I'm not trying to be, you know, not trying to be difficult. I don't try to be difficult, but the more you study, the more controversial you become. And so <laughs> I, I don't mean to be. It just happens. And so I said, I don't know if I'm your um, I don't know if I'm in your tribe, you know. And they said, oh, well, we want you to come on anyway. And I said, oh, man. I said, why don't you go talk to Stephen Strang and ask him if it's OK if I come on there? Because I've walked up horns with him a few times, you know, in person. 
And I'm not sure I'm his favorite person, okay? He might not want me around. So go ask if that's okay. So this young man went and asked uh, Stephen Strang if it was okay if I came on Charisma. And he goes, yeah, 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 sure, bring her on. And I said, I I'm really having a hard time wrapping my mind around this. And um, I said, well, why did you call me? And he said, well, we were looking at our numbers last year. And um, we had like 8 million downloads a month. And um, your, the podcast that you were on as a guest were in our top top 5% of our downloads. And I said, so this is all about numbers, right? He went, well, honestly, yes. I go, oh, so you haven't really heard what I, what I said. He goes, not really. I go, gotcha. Okay, okay, I get this. I, I'm getting this. I'm wrapping my mind around this now. This is about numbers. So you're calling me because I've got high numbers and you want me on because maybe you'll have high numbers. He goes, yeah. I said, got it. Okay. So it's about numbers. Well, all right. Well, let me just see how much is it? You know, there's always a catch. They said $5,000. And I said, $5,000. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it out there in my discussion group, which is uh, Study Matthew 24 Fulfilled. And I went in there and I said to my guys, I said, hey, guys, I just got an invitation to be on the Charisma Podcast Network. I think it's a miracle. Um, you know, they don't teach this. And I do. They said I got high numbers. I believe them. They called me because of that. I need five thousand dollars by midnight. Well, At eleven fifty nine, I had a five thousand dollars came in my phone. My my PayPal on my phone kept blowing up. They were throwing money at this. They were going, yeah, yeah, let's go, go, go. And I went, okay, y'all, we, re we reached the goal. Okay, time out. Y'all don't have to give no more, you know. <laughs> we don't have to give anymore. We got it. And I thought that was a miracle. So there's this one miracle after another. Like God is opening this door for me to go to Charisma. But I was still too chicken to put my podcasts out there like I wanted them. So for a whole year, I was trained by them. I went to every one of their training meetings on Zoom. I was trained by the best because they were the number one Christian podcast network in the world. And so I was trained by the best. Dr. Steve Green, who passed away last summer, like suddenly, unexpectedly, he was my coach and he's the top notch coach. And so I just, I, I studied with him. I, he, he counseled me, he coached me. And then he passed away and went to heaven. And then I go, oh, great. Now I'm forced to do this. And he said something to me before he passed away. He said, you know what, Dr. Cindy? He said, you are going, there's going to be so many doors open for you all over the world. Because once you get on a podcast, you go global real fast. And it spreads and goes viral quicker than you know. This is like, you better be ready. I mean, I'm telling you, you better be ready. And I said, ah, I don't believe that. I didn't know what, I didn't know what this was all about. So once I started getting my podcast out there, I have a back office, you know, where you can see the back office on the, in the, in the um, program. And I saw where in the world people were listening like it's got a, a glow I mean it's got like a map of the whole world in little dots where people are listening and and they're they're downloading you can see it like in real time as they download you know and I was just going oh this is this is kind of scary that they keep up with all this kind of information from a satellite in in one sense but then in another way I was like going South Africa was a number one podcast listening audience next to the United States. I did not understand why in the world people in South Africa understood present truth, but people in America, they don't know how to read. And guys, I know that might sound like an insult when I say that, but let me explain what I mean. If you've ever gone to a doctor and got x-rays, the nurse does not know how to read them. The doctor does. Okay. So when I tell people, 
You don't know how to read. Unless you've got eyes trained, like a doctor sees x-rays and knows what they mean, what's, or an MRI, or a CAT scan, or whatever, they know what they're looking for. Well, we have got to learn how to read better. We've got to up our game. And these are some, I'm going to give you the tools of that right now. I feel the Lord just saying, give them the tools, teach them how to read. So when you read the Bible, you got to realize who is speaking. I know everybody goes, oh, it's the Holy Spirit. Okay, I get that. But who is speaking like, like really? Is it Jesus? Is it Peter? Is it Paul? Who is speaking? To whom are they speaking? I'm not a Thessalonian. Okay, I'm not a Galatian. I'm a whosoever. And if it says whosoever, amen, I'm included. But it says, oh, you foolish Galatians. I'm not a Galatian and I'm not foolish. That's right. Okay, So you've got to know how to read. You know, if it says, um, you know, uh, to you Corinthians, you're doing this and that and the other thing. I'm not a Corinthian. I'm an American and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. That, That was not written to me and they are not speaking to me. Can I benefit from it? Yeah. If the Holy Spirit makes that jump off the page and convict me, amen. But logically, it is not talking to me. It is talking to them. The Bible was not written to us. It was written for us, not to us. Okay. Now, when I read the book of Revelation, first of all, it's not a book. It's a letter. It's a letter to seven churches. You know, the the apostle John was not writing a book on the Isle of Patmos right? He was writing a letter to seven literal churches that the apostle Paul had founded in ancient Greece. I just got invited uh, last week to go to Turkey, which, you know, ancient Greece is now modern day Turkey. I'm going there with some people to actually do a, a live teaching. They want to do video of me teaching on the seven literal churches ruins that were in ancient Greece, now modern day Turkey. And it's, it's, I, I'm so excited about that. But anyway, um, this was a letter written to them about something pertinent to them that would happen within their lifetime. Okay. So the book of Revelation was fulfilled in the first century. It was about the destruction of the temple in AD 70. It is not to be applied in modern day times. It is not to be, a, be you know, I'm not in the church of Laodicea. Okay, I do not live in ancient Greece. You know, oh, well, you, we're like the church of Smyrna or we're Thyatira. Um, no, no, I'm in, I'm in the church of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm in the church of America. That's the church I'm in, you know, as that's the location. And so do, do those characteristics in those churches pertain to some of us? Maybe, and if it does, you know, we know how to make the adjustments. But like, We have got to know what has been finished, what has been fulfilled, because if you're going to build on something, you have to tear down what doesn't work in order to build the right thing on top top of it. Sometimes you got to take a backhoe or or you got to take a bulldozer, you got to take something and tear down something that's no longer serving us obsolete and is, you know, eaten up by termites and water rot and everything else. You got to get rid of stuff like that, burn it and build something in its place. And I believe that's a big deal what's going on right now, especially on TikTok. TikTok has got so many deconstruction people on there. And I get on there and say, hey, guys, it's great that you're deconstructing false teaching, but you got to build the correct teaching in its place. Do you know correct teaching? And they're like, huh? I go, why don't you wait a minute until you know what, until you get some blueprints to build something where you're tearing something down, why don't you hold off a minute? Why don't you sit down and learn a few things so that you can build on top of what you're tearing down? Because we have to uproot and plant. You don't just go in and uproot and leave, you know, an eroded place with no seeds in it. Mm -hmm. You've got to uproot uproot and plant something where you pull weeds out. And I said, we've got to not leave things void. See, there's a, you can get in there and uproot and tear down all day long, but 
but you're leaving stuff void. You can't do that. And I said, you've got to be a builder and a planter. You've got to think moving forward. And there's something you just said, uh, Blake, what I love about we're what we're doing right now, we are making it for the next generation of believers to have it much easier than we did because our ceiling is their floor. We do not want them to go back 50 years that we put in this and, and have to start all over because that, that just that's not going to happen. And the reason why is because you're writing your books. I'm writing my books. I'm doing my podcasts. You're do, we're doing things like this. We have got to keep producing product. And I've been under such conviction about it, such conviction about get this stuff out. I'm in my office right now and I've got a stack of CDs and I'd be, I could do like that. Of my messages that nobody has ever heard. And my husband comes in here and says, well, you got to put those up on your podcast because they are full of amazing truth and revelation the Lord has shown me. So not everything that's ministry is kingdom. Not everything that's ministry is kingdom. Because um, there's a lot of things that we do as ministry is part of an old wine skin. It might be part of an old traditional format. And it's not kingdom. It's not, it doesn't produce righteousness, peace, and joy. You know, it, it's, it's producing you know, sin consciousness, shame, condemnation, and burdens and all that. None of that's of God. None of that's real kingdom. Um, and you know the difference when you get around somebody who's really building the kingdom. You get excited. Your spirit starts to go, woohoo, this is fun. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then, you know, if you get around people throwing a wet blanket all over everything all the time, when they get up and talk in a melancholy voice and everything's all monotone and everything's all well y'all that's just ooh, you know who wants that you sure can't fill up a room with any of that kind of stuff i mean you got to be enthusiastic enthusiasm means in god in theos it means in god if you're not enthusiastic where's god in it god is really happy He's a happy guy. He's a very happy guy. He's all because in his presence is fullness of joy. People talk about, oh, I'm going to be in the presence of God, but they're all gloomy. I go, how are you in the presence of God? Where's your joy? You know, Jesus went through the cross to possess joy because he already was righteousness and peace, but he went through the cross to get our joy. And I am not going to throw my joy down. That is so important that we lay hold to the joy because that's that joy that's going to give us the strength to move forward, to build, and to and to plant, and to keep our faith out there, and to keep our hope out there. Because I mean, it's a it is a beautiful thing to have the joy of the Lord. It is our strength, and um, yeah. And as sonship goes, I'm looking at what you wrote. I, I wrote. I always write down notes when other people talk. If you see me doing like that, it's because I'm writing down. I got a notebook. I'm always writing down notes because I do like to hear what other people are saying. And I do love this thing about, um, I don't know whether you said this or not, but I, the Lord said it to me when you were saying, understand sonship. Understanding sonship. Sonship. And so um, I did a teaching years ago on the sonship of women. And it comes out of Numbers 27 with the daughters of Zelophehad because Zelophehad didn't have any sons. All right, he had five girls yep. and he died. And so the girls are standing at the tent of Moses because uh, and Aaron and Eleazar, they're standing at the tent, uh, opening of the tent. And they're going, hey, we don't have any brothers and all of our boy cousins over here are getting land. And we got to have a place to live. We don't have any land because they were giving out land. And, and so uh, Moses told them. They, they wanted their rightful inheritance. They wanted their rightful inheritance. And uh, Moses went before the Lord and asked the Lord what he thought about it. Moses did not ask Eleazar and Aaron what they thought about it. He went to the Lord, Numbers 27 says. And, and uh, the Lord told Moses, give them their land. And their land is part of the land of Gilead, which is the land where of Manasseh, which was where the oil and Gilead, the healing oil is. And so um, I believe in this hour, in this time, 
a lot of female ministers are getting healed in order for them to accept their land as sons. Yes. Be partakers of the royal priesthood and kingship that rightfully belongs to them. And I appreciate you facilitating female ministers um, and uh, like my husband, my husband, he loves anointed women. Ah, oh, he will facilitate and roll out a carpet for anointed women who have paid a price and who are out there. He just loves it. And so um, I want to just um, thank you for doing that. I see there are several ladies on and, uh, you know, God bless you for doing that. I believe God will always bless you for doing that. Well, I'm married to a oneness preacher. <laughs> yes, she preaches to me. <laughs> I love it. I love oneness too. And that's another thing. That is a, that is a principle. Oneness must be preached like every day. I'm telling you because this, uh, can I say it? The whole Trinity doctrine, guys, we've got to, that's something that's got to be uh, deconstructed because we've got to build something in its place. That is oneness. Oneness is so important. Hallelujah. I didn't mean to interrupt you, sister. No, no. I'm, I I feel like you, you, I just went all over the place. I know it was like a. No, hey, listen, it was it was it was great. It is great. And what, I, what I'm hearing, I'm enjoying every bit of it. Uh, if you want to uh, say some concluding remarks, please do so. This will be, <laughs> this will be the first of many, hopefully, that we'll be oh, able wow. to do this. And, well, uh, I, I appreciate everybody, again, joining today. I don't want to take all, all your uh, wonderful Saturday away from you, but um, thank you for, for joining us here. And um, we, I just, we hold it to an hour. We hold it to an hour. It's no big deal. Everybody knows that if you're going to be a serious disciple, you might be called upon at 12 at noon while you're eating your sandwich. Yeah, true. <laughs> Very true. So uh, my daughters have businesses and uh, one lives in, in uh, uh oh. Am I still there? Yeah. Okay, I don't know what happened. Some of we had a little glitch, but uh, my, one lives in uh, Vivian, uh, Rodessa, and the other lives in Mooring's part, and they both have businesses. And one of them's a caterer, and one of them has a hardware or feed store. And so All they right. come on when they they jump on when they can. But they're two kingdom young ladies too. We love them, appreciate them. One of the things that you uh, spoke to was concerning cassettes. Of course, that's obsolete now, and. I'm a little older, so I remember actually, uh, trust me when I tell you this, uh, I started listening to teachings on wire, uh, wire recordings, and then I went to tape, which is a reel-to-reel, -reel, and then we went to, we had some uh, eight tracks, uh, you know, I'm 70 years old, and eight tracks were still a part of my young life, then cassettes, they lasted a long time, if you, if you really, if you really want to mark us, uh, CDs are a thing of the past. MP3 downloads and thumb drives are a thing of the present. And I don't know what we're going to do next, but I can tell you this, we need to take advantage of every opportunity to use the technology that's available to get the word out. And I rejoice with you, Cindy, uh, for what's happened with Charisma Podcast. I'm not reaching, I, I didn't reach out to them personally because uh, I knew I would be barking up a squirrelish tree. And, uh, and and since and since they called you, uh, you went ahead and, and tested the waters to see whether or not that's what you were supposed to do. I really do believe it will open up uh, brand new arenas and markets to you that uh, weren't available. Uh, one one thing I'll say about writing books is um, you need to move from the thought that it has to be some major publisher publishing your book and go ahead and learn the skills necessary to self publish and uh if you need some help with that i'll be happy to help you and uh they're going to market in the same venues you're going to market in the only difference is their names recognized and yours is not but as uh as 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 i don't know what's going on in the market i can tell you that printed books are not as big a sellers as audio books anymore for me that's so right. audio audio books are be are huge because uh, not only are they cheaper, 
people can listen to them going down the road from their smartphone, uh, close uh, shut-ins, what we would call shut-ins in the old days. They can listen to them right by their bedside. Uh, everywhere in the world, people are downloading. Did you know there's 6 billion plus phones, smartphones in the world, and people are downloading something every day? Every day. So if, you don't, if you don't think you have a ministry opportunity, it's because you're still over here in the 19th and 20th century. I want to drag you kicking and screaming into the 21st century, and I want to challenge you to get involved with using technology to get the message out, especially if you've got something to say. Now, let's, let's just go ahead and say it like it is. Everybody in the body of Messiah is not a seeing, hearing, and speaking gift. But everybody in the body of Messiah has a place in the Father's house, and they're a part of the ministry, ongoing work of the apostolic ministry, which is an extension of Yahshua's ministry. Did you hear me? Right. I want to say this. I don't have a ministry. I'm an extension of the ministry of Yahshua by Holy Spirit in the earth. Well, the sooner you get over the fact that nobody's paying attention to me, I, I, I've got a ministry, i got a calling, i got a ministry. <laughs> let, me, let me say something to you. You've got a measure of influence. You've been given a measure of the gift of faith and of grace, and the, that represents the measure of Messiah, and your metron, which is limited portion or degree, is going to open the door. It can, hey, listen, metrons, they, they increase and they decrease over time but mostly increase. So use everything, every tool in the box that you can to get the word out. Does anybody want to respond to what uh, Cindy shared today, which I believe was was uh, absolutely present truth off, off the chain, love it. I want to just shut up for a minute and let you share. We've got about eight more minutes, seven more minutes. You'll have to unmute yourself to ask a question or comment. Well, I'll I'll start, I guess. Uh, Cindy, that was great. I made lots of notes here. Uh, you mentioned uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. My wife has had a tremendous testimony about doing just that in her own life. I don't want to take time up to tell her story now, but that that is something that through her testimony, I have learned is not something to set aside or think is just a, a, a chorus to sing. It is important. You also mentioned we can't look back. I am one among a number of folks to whom the Lord has given Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19. Forget the former things. I'm doing something new. And that's, we, we get so caught up in the, in the past. We forget that there's a season for everything. We forget Ecclesiastes chapter three. Uh, that's, there's other things I could say, but thank you for your sharing today. It was wonderful. Well, you're welcome, Robert. And I will say this too. Um, when it says forget the former things, that means the good things too, the, the former good things and bad things because see we will ride on our past successes and you know you hear people talk all day long about what they used to do and all these wonderful things in the past and back in the good old days and all that kind of thing we have to forget that if we're going to move forward as well um and uh back to the uh blake about the podcast and about audiobooks it just it just occurred to me um to say this is that you know God said, let there be light, and then there was light. In other words, people have to hear something before they see it. They're going to have to hear a sound, a voice, before they see the light. They're going to have to hear God's word before they see the light. So it's, sound always comes before what you see. You will hear something before you see something. So, so having um, audio books and podcasts and yeah. audio is very, very key in this time. People have to hear it and they have to hear the, the word of the Lord before they can see. Amen. 
Anybody else, real quick? We got about four minutes. I've, I've been sitting on this bed since the beginning, before we started, uh, and it flows Bring into it, what everything, what everything has has uh, been said. Uh, one of the first things I heard this morning at the kitchen table was, "He who practices the truth comes to the light." Now, there's been mention of the light, but but if we are practicing truth, then we have to come to the light, so that his works may be manifested as having been done by God. That's in John 3, 21. And he also gave me this, uh, the firm foundation laid by Yahweh stands sure and unshaken, bearing this seal and inscription. Yahweh knows personally those who are his and will cause them to be drawn near to him and this has been our prayer yahweh you are our god other masters besides you have ruled over us but today in this hour we will acknowledge and decree your name only that the foundation which has been set fixed and is firm is unshakable for you, Yahweh, are the architect, and you, Father, are the builder. You have commanded us to test that foundation. You've commanded us to test that foundation by building on that rock. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, and practical wise man who built his house upon the rock. Here is room for discernment, and this is a call for the wisdom of interpretation. Let anyone who has intelligent, intelligence, penetration, and insight enough, let him hear. This calls for a mind, my mind, that I have placed within you to consider what I am revealing in this hour. Your mind, my mind, our mind has been packed, saturated with wisdom and intelligence. It is something for a particular mode of thinking and judging of thoughts feelings, and purposes. For Yahweh has put it into their hearts to carry out his own purpose by acting in harmony with one another. Amen. Listen, before we jump off the call, one last thing. Um, I was just thinking, and a thought came to me, actually. For those of you that are uh, not necessarily authors, but you are poets, or you have some short stories in your uh, spirit, maybe your life is a short story. One, I mean, maybe it's like a Reader's Digest, that type short story, short story after short story. Uh, there's a now if you go to kdp.com, which is Kindle, they have a, a they have a feature over there called Kindle Vela. Kindle Vela, it's for storytellers. So if you've got poems, if you've got prose, if you've got short writings that you want to turn into a series, you can do it right there at kdp.com and, uh, and Kindle, Kindle Vela. I just published, just to show you how easy this is, I just published two e-books this morning, which are in the process of being reviewed within 30 minutes. Wow. Back, once, they, once they're up and ready for, for publication, and for a purchase, I'll go back over there and I'll I'll make a print copy of that book. I'll do both of those books within an hour or less. Once I do that, I'll take that uh, the number, the code off of that book and go over to Audible. It'll take me about a month on Audible because I that's why I do it last. So I'll have a ebook, I'll have a print, a print on demand book available within the within the next few days. And it took me about an hour and 30 minutes max 
to get them uploaded and uh, ready to sell. And so, uh, like I said, one of them will be available probably over the weekend. Uh, the other might come by Monday. It depends on how fast they they process it, but they're short books, so they might be available even now as I'm speaking, called True Kingdom Culture and uh, also uh, The Measure of Messiah, which I already spoke to, to both of them today. Wow. The first call. So, I'm impressed. Uh, so let me say, let me say this. <laughs> I don't sit down and say, you know, I just think I'm going to write a book today. You know, that's just not how it works with me. Uh, Holy Spirit speaks to me in thoughts, in uh, musings, in images, and in quotes. Believe it or not, he speaks to me in quotes more than any other form of revelation. The, sure, the scripture is still in, in place for something to leap off of the page and bring me a rhema word that applies to me because it's speaking to me in that moment. Sure, that's possible. But most of what I receive becomes a journal note, and then it becomes a teaching, and then it becomes a book. And usually, and I don't know why, I usually write about two books a year, but lately I've been writing eight and ten wow. a year. So the last couple of years has been an increase, an acceleration of not only the word of revelation, a present truth coming to me, it's been accelerated in the area of print and getting the word out. So all I can say is you better hang on to your divot because, honey, the wind is blowing and uh, you, you better get ready because we are way past wire, tape, reel-to-reel, -reel, CD, even MP3. I mean, we're going to another level in publication and production. Get yes. ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sandy, <laughs> what a blessing. Thank you for visiting us today. You're always welcome. Until next time, this is Blake Diggett, by the way, with Home Family Gathering. You can find all of my books and music at booksbyblh.me and musicbyblh.me. Again, thank you for listening. Home Family Gathering is a listener-supported ministry and we appreciate your support. Apostolic Kingdom Alliance and Blake Higginbottom are supported by the generous contributions of friends and family. We are grateful for your continued support in the ongoing work of Apostolic Kingdom Ministry. Thank you.